When NZXT innovates, the industry takes notice, even when it's lit like fire. Well, this time they're looking for less pyrotechnics and a bit cooler temperatures. Did they succeed? Origin PC is a high quality custom PC build maker that provides you endless possibilities to build you your dream PC rig. Whether that's custom water cooled or AIO cooled builds, or fully customized builds or pre configured builds, Origin PC has got you covered. They can even do sweet custom designs on the cases using the latest in print technology to take your brand or custom build to the next level. Check it all out at OriginPC.com. Now, when NZXT released the NZXT H1, a mini ITX case in February of 2020, the industry did take notice. A sleek looking mini ITX case that looked a little bit taller than Xbox Series X. Though this was before the Series X, so people didn't really make the comparison until later. Now, since its release, they have sold over 32,000 cases in the US alone. But then the recall time. Fire, fire! It was a dark time for NZXT. Honestly, this case couldn't catch a break. And even today, if I were to build in it, there is always some reference to the fire. The very famous Gamer Nexus fire. However, it's a new dawn. And thus, NZXT has introduced us to the H1 Mini V2. With all the goodness the original H1 had, sands the flames and with the promise of cooler temperatures. Now we have a good relationship with NZXT and when we heard about the refresh, we were absolutely stoked. See what I did there? Stoked? Like, sto okay, enough of the fire jokes. Now we were excited to try it. Regardless of what did happen with the whole fire thing, this case was really good and provided a new way for folks to build a PC that wasn't going to have a massive footprint on their desk. I mean, if you compare the NZXT H1 to something like the Cooler Master have 700 Evo, it's a bit like the Burj Khalif versus a tiny house. However, you would be amazed at just how roomy and cool those tiny houses are. And we can say the same thing about the NZXT H1 V2. Looking at the outside of this case, it comes in two colors, matte black and matte white, just like the previous version of the H1. It is also like the version of the H1, completely made out of steel and tempered glass. We're waiting for some color options here, as even though there is tempered glass, the case doesn't really have a lot of flash. Maybe one of these days we'll get like a disco RGB version that can sync to the beat of the music like Dead Mouse. That sounded like a lot cooler of a comparison in my head. Now one thing worth noting though, this case in V2 has packed on a little weight. It's a little bit bigger. Now the H1 V2, after eating a ton of Ben & Jerry's, comes at 196 millimeters or 7.7 .7 inches wide, a little bit wider in the belt, 405 millimeters or 15.9 inches tall, so it grew a little, and 196 millimeters or 7.7 .7 inches deep while coming in at a whopping 16.7 pounds. If you put the NZXT H1 V2 in front of the NZXT H1, you get a full eclipse. Your front panel is pretty basic as it comes with two USB 3.2 Gen 1 USB Type A ports. It's got one USB 3.2 Gen 2 USB Type C port, one combo jack for headset and mic, now before we jump into just how much this new weightier H1 can hold, let's look at what the new H1 comes with as the price tag on this H1 is a whopping $399, about the cost of a Corsair 5000T, which is a whole lot bigger. Now, now hold on, don't tune away, it's not just a case for $399, there is more to it than that. Oh, and while you aren't skipping to the next video, if you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing, that would be awesome especially if you like the entertaining yet informative videos like the one you're watching right now or other videos that we do. Okay, so for $399.99, you get the case. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that's right. You actually do get the case when you buy the case. But wait, there's more. It comes with a 140 millimeter AIO liquid cooler, an SFX-L 750 watt 80 plus gold PSU, one AER P140 millimeter case fan, one 92 millimeter case fan, that's new, a PCIe 6x16 Gen 4 riser cable, a breakout cable, which is for your front panel connections, and other installation accessories. And of course, it also comes with, wait for it, the manual. Not, not that you ever read that. So in essence, you are getting quite a bit with this case to justify the price tag of $399.99. Seriously, if you do the math, and hopefully you can do math, you actually see that there is a ton of value and the case itself is actually sub $100 minus all the extra stuff, especially that manual.
and you actually need all those parts. So when you think about the total cost of the bill, that $399 is coming off of a lot of that cost. All right, let's break down the case to see what we can fit inside before we get into the build and thermals. The case comes completely apart as each side panel comes off, and you can slide the top and other side panels off in one piece. This makes it really easy to build inside the case, as most ITX cases have a feature like this for easier access to parts and panels. By the way, sliding the top off is very satisfying. Now, most of the time, we would start with what motherboard types you can put inside the case, but I'm sure you probably know this already that ITX motherboards are the only motherboards that will fit in here given it's an ITX case. And if you don't know it, well, well, I guess now you do. Now for GPUs, the maximum clearance is 324 millimeters with a max thickness of 58 millimeters. GPUs like your EVGA 3070 Ti for the Win 3 Ultra Gaming will fit in here with zero issue. Now we know because we actually put one in it. Now for storage, the case has room for two two and a half inch SSDs and well, that's pretty much it. So your best bet is to like get a motherboard that has like two M.2 slots on it, like the Asus ROG Strix Z690i. I would be curious down in the comments below, how many people actually use two and a half inch SSDs anymore? Sound off. This case comes with an NZXT fan controller that plugs in via USB 2 port on your motherboard. The fan controller or hub works directly with NZXT cam. I mean, this really is SFF PC building done easy. Like one of those little yellow for idiots guys, that book will light the world on fire with just how easy it is to build in the NZXT H1. Okay, I had to get one more fire joke in, sheesh. Now let's get into the build. So we're gonna be using the uh, Intel Core i, uh, the Core i7 12700K. We're gonna be putting that until inside the RG Strix B660i uh, gaming Wi-Fi. Cooling is gonna be provided by the NZXT H1. We're gonna be using G-Skill Triton Z5. This is 6,000 uh, 6, megahertz RAM. So we are using DDR5, woohoo! For our OS drive, the 8200 Pro from XPG. Patriot Pre 400 uh, Gen 4 M.2 NVMe. We can put big old chonky cores, EGGA 3070 for the Win 3, which is about the maximum you wanna use uh, with a 750 watt PSU. So all of this is gonna go inside of here. We're gonna go ahead and take this apart and get it ready. So here's our EVGA RTX 3070 going in. This is our Gen 4 NVMe SSD. There we go. There we go. Okay, so it says remove screws at the arrow. So here we go. There it is, and then this just pops open. <gasps> Look at that. There we go. So there it is, guys. The whole build is done. That's all there really is to it. It's really that straightforward. The build is done. There's the NZXT H1 V2. Building in the NZXT H1 V2 really is like taking SFF building and making like a Duplo Lego set out of it. It's that easy. Everything is pre-routed. It's even got stickers telling you how to pretty much do everything in the build. I mean, the case is still cramped and you'll have some struggles getting cables managed, etc. cetera. Wait, wait, hold up. Let me just put it this way. My streams are normally three hours longish, and that's just getting a build built and turned on. But in the case of the NZXT H1 V2, it was one hour and 36 minutes. And I mean, I was benchmarking this little beast at that point in time, but you, you can tune into it right here. It's, it's just some older white dude building a PC and reading dad jokes. Wow. I'm really selling it, aren't I? Now I know I build a lot of PCs, but I cannot understate just how easy it is to build out a PC in the case. Wait, why are you looking at me like that? 
Wait, so you benchmarked it? Why, did you hear anything I said? Yes. NZXT told us that they had improved thermals in the case, and that means that we knew we needed a stretch to see just how far we could take the NZXT H1 V2. Plus, let's be honest, a lot of innovation has happened in the SFF space since the original NZXT H1. I mean, the Height Revolt 3 has a handle, which you can use to also cross your enemies. So we needed to see if the NZXT H1 V2 was up to par. This time we put in a 12th gen Core i7 12700K and the EVGA RTX 3070 Ti for the Win 3. Cause we got more room, so we had to see if this thick boy could fit. So starting off with CPU, at I don't think started off pretty good with the CPU sitting at 27 in the open case scenario and 29 in the closed case. But yeah, we found the case had limits pretty fast. Because when we popped it under load, like a micro setter getting fresh GPUs in stock, we see things jump up to a toasty 80 and an even warmer, or dare I say, smoking 90 in the closed case scenario. Now, there was no fire, nor was there any thermal throttling either, so yeah. So what about GPU, Roby? How was our thick, triple C thick, RTX 3070 Ti from EVGA? Pretty much good to go. I mean, zero issues with temps here. While at idle, both in closed and open case, things were sitting at 33, but when I started rendering out my new male model portfolio featuring my six pack abs, photoshopped of course, we saw things pop up to 59 in the open case and still a very comfy 60 in the closed case. By the way, those modeling photos are fire. Dang it, I made another fire joke. How did that build you built actually perform in games, Roby? You know, in case I wanted to build the exact same build with the amazing links you provided down in the description below. First up, it's single player NVIDIA tuned experiences, AKA games favoring NVIDIA GPU. So let's start with Cyberpunk 2077, shall we? Uh, at 1440p with DLSS on and everything at the highest preset, we were looking at 58.33 FPS. Not quite the fluid 60, and you may want to tune things down a bit so you get that smooth as butter frame rate. For Tomb Raider running at 1440p with DLSS on and the highest preset, we saw an average frame rate of 208 frames per second across the runs we did on the game. So pretty much good to go there. So for Metro Exodus, also running at 1440p, running with ray tracing on high and DLSS set to ultra performant, we saw an average frame rate across our runs of 72.17, north of 60 with room to spare. Now for some of those AMD single player experiences, again, meaning games that favor AMD, first up Dirt 5 running at 1440p with ultra high graphic settings, we saw an average frame rate of 106.1. Perfect for racing, but south of 120 frames per second, if that means anything to you. Lastly, and rounding out the single player experiences was Borderland 3 running at the highest graphical preset, we saw an FPS average of 81.69. So what about MP Roby? Well, for Apex Legends running on low visual settings at 1440p, optimized for competitive gameplay and high frames per second, we saw an average frame rate of 253.6 FPS across our multiple gaming sessions. More than adequate, methinks. For Call of Duty Warzone, again on low visual settings at 1440p, optimizing for competitive FPS gameplay and maximizing for frame rate, we saw an average FPS of 205 frames per second. By the way, I said duty. Now finally, for Fortnite again at 1440p on low visual settings, Set for competitive play, you are sitting at a still very fluid and high 408.5 frames per second, which it runs on a potato. So this is really it running on a really fast potato, I guess. So let's wrap it up. The NZXT H1 is improved. Unfortunately though, it feels a bit like it's now being left in the past. Just know that if you do wanna do a build, you will have some limits on what you can put in the case for the CPU side, given the thermal performance of the single radiator IIO. Now the build experience is great. The footprint on your desk is minimal and there's no fire, so these are all wins. There is also something very pleasing with how this case looks, which is what I appreciate the most about this case. But that's subjective and completely up to you. You know what else is up to you? What you thought about this video? Tell us and maybe win a little cash in the process. First and foremost, you need to leave a quality comment down below along with liking and subscribing to the channel. When I say quality comment, it doesn't need to be positive. It just needs to be something you liked or didn't like about the video, what surprised you, etc., about the builder video in general. Just not, I deserve to win, can I has a free PC, can you send me an NZXT H1V2, or something similarly lame. You also need to ensure we have a way to reach you via your YouTube profile, like your email. So put your email in your YouTube profile, because we will be giving away $25 to one lucky comment below that is worldwide as long as you accept PayPal or Venmo. So did you like this video and was the review helpful? Were you surprised by anything in this case? Were you surprised by the thermals? 
What are your closing thoughts on the NZXT H1 V2 after watching the review? We'd love to know all of that down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a new video right here on Robitech. Did you know we have a live stream channel for builds and events? In fact, we built this case on that channel. So check out the link down below for Robitech Live and make sure you like and subscribe so you know when we go live, which is three days a week. If you have questions about this case or any other tech related questions, then check out our amazing Discord server filled with other tech and PC enthusiasts that love to share their thoughts and ideas about these very subjects. Finally, are you looking for cheap tech? Then check out at robytechdeals.com or at robytechdeals on Twitter, where you have our guy Tom scouring the internet for the best deals on all things, tech, PC components, gaming, TVs, you name it. Finally, you can also follow me and my team on all our other socials at Robytech absolutely everywhere. We hope you enjoyed this video and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.